I think. Oh, no, 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 no. So you th you don't have anything to show us yet. I'm on assignment with investigative journalist and war correspondent Aiden Hartley. Today, we're in Dar es Salaam, posing as ivory buyers. Please hurry up. Thank you. I'm trying to put a little bit of pressure on him. Otherwise, he might think that it's strange because he's kept giving us the runaround and delays. And you know, if we were authentic, we wouldn't tolerate that. To recap, as part of a National Geographic special digging into the ivory trade, we split into two teams. Our China team revealed that a lot of ivory is for sale there. There are 137 government-designated shops selling it. Some of it's legal, but we suspect that a lot of it is illegal. That's what we're here to investigate. What we know is the quantity of ivory that is flooding the market in China itself couldn't possibly be supplied by any legal sales from recent years. I have been told that there are ivory traders who are, are selling uh, tusks almost openly in Dar es Salaam, despite the fact that it's extremely illegal here. I wanted to test those reports to find out whether they were true. It is very important for our filming to remain secret. This is comparable with um, the narcotics trade. So we had to wear secret cameras. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I should stress perfect. that uh, firearms are used in this uh, poaching crisis. And these uh, gangs are ruthless criminals. Could be very dangerous for us. If I wasn't already nervous enough. All right, so we'll, uh, we'll give you a call. We may be here um, an hour. On the way to meet the seller, Aiden asks me if I have a thick jacket. I say, no, why? He tells me a thicker jacket will provide extra protection in the event of a knife fight. This is not reassuring advice. Yeah, we've got more so, so my friend, can yeah. you get a thousand kilos? But then kill it. Yes. One thousand kilos. Yeah, but not for one day. That's for one week. For one week and yeah. Okay, so in a week you can get a thousand kilos. Yeah. Well, right, okay, let's start with the song. Yeah, yeah start with the sample, like maybe four, five, or six pieces. Okay, let's go and have a look at those. Okay. To get to his ivory stash, the seller insists that we ride with him. For the next hour, we crisscross the slums of Dar. Maybe it's just to disorient us. So where are we going now? Now don't give me out. Or maybe he's just trying to feel us out. Either way, we're totally in his control. Buddy. This is my business. Come to that. All right. Can we, can we see? See? Yeah. yeah Let's have a look at the rest of them. Yeah. How many have you got here? No, here, just here. Six. So this one, if you give me money today, I keep it for you. <laughs> what we secretly filmed with that ivory trader gave us incredible evidence of just how rampant the illegal ivory trade is in Tanzania. I was very struck as we looked at these things lying on his bed that they represented four dead elephant. You could still see the dried blood on them. He said that it was 20 kilograms of ivory and he wanted the cash then and there. $8,000 is what he wanted. On the open market in China, that could fetch up to $40,000. Incredible. Next week, we go undercover into one of China's ivory shops. I'm Brian. Where Brian Christie will examine the blurry line that defines legal versus illegal ivory. It's illegal. Mm. Everybody take one knock. Put knock one together. Yeah.